Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I hope to fulfill the contract to build a new orbital station around Minmus and uh, that will help us do carbonite mining on Minmus which might be a little bit easier than trying to do carbonite mining on the moon though that doesn't mean that we're going to neglect our moon base of course. In fact I think carbonite mining around Minmus will probably be a more automated thing rather than us building a little colony for Kerbals on there. But before we get to that, I need to take care of the missions already underway. The first thing I want to do is we've got uh, the second stage of the Maximus launcher uh, still to return back to back to Kerbin and attempt that return. And that's important because the Minmus station I intend to try and launch on a modified version of the Maximus and be valuable to see whether the second stage needs some work as well. We, we know the first stage does, but I want to know whether the second stage does. Then, uh, perhaps bringing the asteroid into a closer orbit, though some I mentioned that we should probably bring it into orbit around Minmus, uh, that would be an interesting idea, add it to the station or uh, put it into, well, we'll I, I think transferring it to Minmus right now would be uh, not such a bad idea considering it's so far out. Bringing it so, uh, closer into Kerbin seems like a waste. And we do have the fuel for that sort of Minmus transfer. Okay, that was not at all hard. We've got a Minmus periapsis there. Maybe we can make it a little bit tighter. Eh, not so much. Don't really see a need to correct inclination considering uh, we, we can do that around Minmus without any sort of trouble. Uh, this maneuver only costs 128.5 meters per second. We've got plenty more than that. So yeah, uh, we'll just transfer this little asteroid over to Minmus. But uh, let's, let's add that to... I don't have uh, it doing the maneuver nodes automatically, so let me add it manually here. And let us turn to our second stage and see what we need to do with that. Okay, well this should probably start us out air braking. So 423 meters per second in order to correct our inclination so that we can eventually hit the KSC and then also bring our orbit into a periapsis of 33 kilometers. This burn will take place in a day, so it's actually the, the asteroid that we're going to be taking care of first. But uh, let's add this alarm as well. All right. So uh, yeah, let's get the asteroid on its course to Minmus. All right, so Minmus may be about to get its first quote-unquote natural satellite, sort of, kind of. It's a natural object, it's just not very natural for it to be there. Okay, that seemed to be a minimum. So 411 kilometers on the Minmus periapsis. Let's add the SOI change. Okay, so next let's uh, do the maneuver for the second stage to bring it back. Okay, all seems kosher here. Solar panels are out, electric charge is fine. Time warping to maneuver node. Okay, inclination's going up. Periapsis. Uh, let me check air braking calculator. I do want to get into orbit first because I need to make sure I hit the KSC. And so a uh, nice, nice orbit would be uh, a good idea. All right, let me check out how that's going. That's unlocked. That's still got fuel. Okay, uh, air braking calculator says I should actually be at 34 kilometers. So let me, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, that should be safe. All right, uh, solar panels in now, I think. And retrograde. Okay, now we're just doing a pass to get into orbit, so we're not gonna be facing the full effects of the reentry heating. So the question is whether this will be able to take even this amount. We're about to find out. This stack quinta adapter is having issues. So are the aerospikes. Ooh, a thousand 
200, they're overheating. 1,300. But we're uh, going up now. Temperature holding and decreasing. Doesn't bode well for going going down though. This is just skimming through. Granted, it's at a higher speed, but still. Well, it doesn't look like that was enough. Okay, I'm gonna retro burn a little bit to bring orbit down. That's a bit too conservative. Of course, air braking calculator isn't uh, far compatible, so that might be a thing too. Now we're gonna hang out until the KSC comes into position. And since if the KSC is in the dark, I'm not interested in launching, I'll probably just do this part first and uh, then we'll launch or attempt to launch the Minmus station and then after that take care of the tug because and the uh, asteroid because there's no point wasting 13 hours just waiting around. We've already done enough waiting in this episode. Okay that will do. I think 35 kilometers from uh, 80 kilometer orbit is about right though I don't know if we're actually 80 kilometers on the Apple side where we're burning we'll see so solar panels back in so we'll be skimming through the atmosphere for an extended period of time and hopefully that'll dissipate enough speed so that we're not going to overheat too much and probably Keep in mind that we want to do that in the future as well. Uh, we're a little bit far off the peninsula though. I might want to bring it in a little bit lower. I really should do a round of re-entry testing in, with FAR. All of my numbers are actually based on stock. And that's part of the reason why in this series the, the stuff has been a little bit off, or a lot off. And in this case, I think we're once again overshooting. I think uh, with far the overshooting is sort of sort of gonna happen if I don't uh, reassess the numbers. Of course, there's the matter of whether it's all going to blow up anyway. I think this can survive an ocean splashdown if if it's intact. 1,200. And decreasing from 1,255. Now it's all about the rest of the stuff Firmer Space can do to us. This thing has trouble just uh, staying close to retrograde. I think maybe where the controller is is the thing. Okay, and will we go for parachutes at 280? 280. Okay, parachute deployment. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to... Okay, I better start running the engines right now, otherwise we're... Okay, let's see... 7.4, not bad. But I do think I want that below 6 at least, so... Good thing we kept the fuel... Uh, landing gear? I don't know if that'll help on this one, but... Okay, floats just fine, so that's good. So we can re recover this from from water if necessary. Let's do it. Okay, no science of course. Uh, 
39.1 kilometers away from the KSC, 96.2% of total value, but 63,000 funds. It's a very expensive piece. Um, most of that, well, a lot of that is the aerospace, but actually it's these, the landing assembly. You know what? I, I don't know. Maybe we should just land it in the water and skip the landing pods. That's really expensive. But then again, if we accidentally hit land, then what, right? But yeah, those are expensive little landing pods. Maybe we should just use other lander legs. I think that's uh, they're they're totally jipping us on that. Um, all right. Okay. So uh, well, that makes me feel a little bit better about the launching a new version of the Maximus. At least we can retrieve that stage. Let's take a look. Okay. So let's go from the top down. I actually forgot to put an antenna on, which is part of the requirements, so let me do that right now before I forget again. Uh, let's... no, let's just do one. Saves... saves a little bit of cost. There. Now we've got an antenna. Alright, so, first, this is our miner, and it carries plenty of fuel to uh, get down and get back up again. Getting down is not so hard uh, because the carbonite tank is empty, but uh, getting back up with all the carbonite, that's a little bit more difficult. The carbonite's quite heavy. Um, actually, it's very heavy, but uh, we'll be, by my calculations, we'll be able to recover about half of it. In other words, half of it will have to be converted to liquid fuel and oxidizer for the lander, and then the other half will be able to be stored for other purposes so it's about a 50% efficiency sort of thing the lander does not have a converter it does have these nifty little circular concentrating solar panels so we've got that drill units RCS of course because it has to dock and it's actually uh, connected by a stack separator to this because they didn't want to use the docking ports they didn't know that if they'd be rigid enough so we've got that going so we'll have to separate it and then redock but yep this is actually the fuel tank. Actually, I don't want it full right now. Um, gonna have to watch out for that. It should be empty because we're going to be filling it up, obviously. Uh, this is already full. Actually, you know what? Uh, this is lower than this. Maybe I should not rethink things too much. Uh, but uh, since it's lower, it'll be safer to put the fuel in here and then transfer out after launch, right? Uh, how much do we need specifically? I think it's just uh, 318 or so. Let's do that much for good measure. So let's dump the fuel out of these. Uh, this. And that'll be a marginally safer arrangement. Okay, so after that, uh, SAS units, we've got the habitation ring. We've got uh, solar panel arrays on extendable uh, outriggers, the telescopic pistons, so we got to send those out, and then we'll have solar panel arrays on the outside there. And, uh, yep, uh, we've got the communication array, a little docking unit, so we're going to have uh, crosswise docking, so we're going to have a main unit here and then possibly two out there, like that. Uh, here's all the, you know, the carbonite uh, converter stuff plus some additional curved solar arrays. So we've got uh, distiller for the mod propellant as well as converter for the LFO and mod propellant. And that is the end of the station. The station ends with this docking port. And then this, of course, is the regular second stage that we've seen. However, I wanted to reconsider these guys, right? They're very expensive. And that's probably because I scaled them up. I don't think the default cost is very expensive. Uh, well, 2,900 is pretty darn expensive. Hmm. They look good, don't they? And we are intending to recover them. And we've actually proven that we can recover them. So, I I'm going to leave it be for now. Since uh, we will recover them and that will be more incentive to do so. Anyway, uh, somebody suggested putting canards in order to control the Maximus on the way down. I think that's, an o yeah, that's a good idea. There's other ideas like had uh, first of all struts of course the main thing was that the fuel tank got ripped apart due to aerodynamic stress so whenever that happens you gotta think struts I also noticed that the telescopic pistons weren't really carrying these landing struts properly the landing struts were just a tiny bit askew impossible to correct in this version with the gizmos in 0.90 maybe I would have been able to correct it but not here 
Uh, we've had that similar sort of problem with uh, engines before, and that was causing the rot I think I think that was causing the rotation on reentry because they were just a little bit askew that uh, gave the gave the vehicle that rotation that we had, and maybe the rotation was what uh, ripped the fuel tanks apart. So I'm hoping that's the case. So instead of putting them on telescopic pistons, I'm using these procedural structural elements, basic little pods with nose cones on either end, and hoping that will do the trick. Um, not not the most beautiful arrangement, but still. I've put on a specialty SRBs here, a specialty meaning that I've configured them so that it's just enough for this launch. Now with the station on top and the, and the little vehicle there, the minor unit. Uh, this is a very very tall assembly as you can see. I thought about putting them in parallel, in other words putting some of the units here and using uh, one of these either using hold on, uh, which ones? Either using this bicoupler or using the this one and just putting the units side by side but didn't look quite right. I'll have to refine that idea. Uh, the problem is the bicouplers themselves don't really look great in the first place, especially when you consider the look of the station modules themselves. So that's a problem. And also the placement of the habitation ring becomes an issue. Okay, so I think we have all of that. Oh, uh, one of the reasons for the huge costs is because I've already loaded this up with machinery, so we're not going to have to transfer machinery to it. So hopefully it'll be able to get up and running right away. We'll see. More experimentation. Uh, you notice I went with four fairing pieces this time, and that's because the fairings are frankly quite huge, and so I'm a little bit worried about that. Also, due to that worry, I've decided to stage everything at the same time as launch clamps so that we don't have any mishaps like that. Now, every time I load up this vessel, it unlocks these, which are the reserve tanks for the return. So, that's something I'm worried about. Okay, gonna save this. And, yeah. This is what we're going to try and launch, except we're not going to launch it with Kerbals. So don't go in there, you two. We're going to launch it without Kerbals. Alright, so see you on the launch pad. Okay, so here we are. And this gives you an idea of the enormity of this thing. Uh, I'm going to clear up some, some of the clutter here. We don't need FMRS going. I think we are ready. Ooh, no Kerbals, that's good, but it's still a very expensive launch. Alright, here we go. Alright, looks like we're clear of the launch pad and towers. But with such an unwieldy payload, mainly worried about the rotation. There's also a little bit of concern about how the boosters separate because of the fins. I'm pretty sure I need to set roll to 90 here. Looking okay, sorta. I don't see any bits of the payload jetting out at least. Trajectory is good. We've got good stability. Okay, preparing for SRV burnout. And they're out, separate. Hopefully the little separatrons don't burn anything. They don't seem to have. Okay, and the SRVs are clear. We continue. Well, this is not as bad as I thought it would be. But there's a lot to go through now. We've still got to bring this first stage back, and that's the real trick of this. Yep, this thing is just cruising right along. Let's see if we can correct the inclination to help the vehicle get back. 
So obviously I'm not dropping fairings until we are definitely in, or at least we shut down the engines. I guess I can do it once we shut down the engines. Probably coasting to Apoapsis soon. Let's go there. All right. All right, yes, let's go for fairing separation. This should be interesting. Whoa. Massive debris coming down. Somewhere, hopefully, in the ocean. Somebody could build a boat out of those. Anyway, um, yep, there is our, our craft, our station plus mining lander. That's why it's uh, Minmus Pack rather than just Minmus Station. Okay, 101 by 102. And that's good. Let's see how much we have actually brought up to low curve in orbit. Okay, so the payload including the Minmus transfer section, the second stage of course, uh, 92 tons. Not huge. I mean, people have done more, of course. Uh, now, throttle is off. Let's ignite the aero spikes. Okay, so that's ready to go. Let's see, two should be the panels that are safe to extend right now, which include the ones on the... Ah, oh, I thought I had got these on two as well. Actually, that might not be safe. They've got the struts going over them, you see. Don't know how that works out. Anyway, those solar panels will be just fine for now. Okay, so anyway, this is ready for transfer to Minmus. Now, bringing this back. Okay, so I've decided to aim for 28 kilometers instead, uh, hoping that the lower aim will help us not overshoot this time, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to do more testing in order to figure out exactly what the numbers are when it's with far instead of stock. All right, we'll go with that. All right, so 28.3 on the periapsis. We are a 160 ton vehicle or thereabouts. So I, again, I'm hoping that the slightly askew placement of the landing struts was really what was causing the rotation. However, I do have the benefit of the little canards that I've placed there, hoping that that will help us control this. But uh, this is huge. And uh, I could have used the backward canards. might have worked better. Uh, I wouldn't look like the look of that. Because essentially there's like a horizontal stabilizer right now. We've got everything backwards, considering that we're heading in in this direction. It's not really helpful, but could also use... Well, the Werner, Werner thrusters aren't particularly good at killing rotation, depending on how you place them. thought about putting heat shields on the bottom of these uh, structural components. Also thought about putting solid rocket boosters on the tip there instead of the big one, the two big ones that we had, but I didn't really want to be carrying down the extra mass. It's not very useful. And of course, you can't configure those as finely as we'll be able to with the two that we put on the side in order to adjust for the payload mass. Well, carrying a thousand three hundred meters per second. I'm gonna say that we're pretty close to on it right now. Let's see how the... Well, I could afford to bring it in more. Hopefully that won't be too much and hopefully we'll be hitting land this time. Too much would be the mountains. As long as we hit land between uh, the mountains and KSC I'm not too worried. We're not slowing down as fast as I'd like though. Heating up quite a lot. Ooh, well, those aren't critical components, but I hate to see that anyway.
We're just not producing enough drag. I'm gonna use some thrust here. Let's use that much for now. If we uh, go into the water, that's a test worthwhile. The main thing is to see whether I've corrected the spinning issue, and I'm getting some wiggles here. We'll see. We're not through the thick of it yet. We're away from the retrograde vector here. We are going into the water. But I do want to see whether this thing can stay upright in the water as well. Pretty confident on land. Okay. Through heating, but we're starting to have some spin issues. You can see roll control is all the way off to one side here. I'm going to give some thrust. Uh, hopefully the engines will help be able to control roll with their, uh, their gimbling. It's not really helping right now. Now it's this roll. Let me shut down the engines for a bit. App. Uh, oh, the engines are gone. App. Uh, and random disassembly because of that. It's a fairly mild roll, actually, when you think about it. Not all happy it seems to disassemble itself like that. There's not really much of a precedent. I mean, the. Uh, Better get the shoots out. I mean, when you think about it, the feather doesn't uh, randomly disassemble itself. Uh, it does have a roll issue. I think it might have found in, on an initial attempt, but I think it was it, it rolls much faster than this thing does. Let's check F three. Okay, first thing, joint between procedural liquid tank and procedural liquid tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Now I've, I've added canards to help control roll, I've uh, added struts to uh, solidify that connection. Hmm. Rockman, Rockmax brand adapter collided into, I wonder where that one is. The rest of them don't say aerodynamic stresses. Just that first one. The rest is all structural failure. I think the thing to do will be to go back to going with FMRS and uh, instead of trying to get a uh, single stage that goes into orbit, maybe we'll multi-stage it and endeavor to bring each of the stages down separately. So uh, it won't be as well, I mean, it'll be still a pretty big thing, the first stage. But it won't be coming down from... Well, I mean, it seems to handle dead re-entry just fine. The problem is actually at lower levels. And any way you look at it, the first stage is going to be going through those altitudes. Maybe not at those speeds, though. Maybe if we're coming down at a slower speed, uh, Fermi Aerospace will not have as much problem with it. I could try and change that bottom structure so that there's just one tank down there. Maybe it's because there's two tanks at the bottom there, I don't know. Okay, but we'll recover this. Well, that netted us about 26,000 funds. Alright, on to the mission. Okay, so taking care of the main goal of this, which is the Minmus base, and we'll get uh, we'll get plenty of funds out of that. Though probably not enough to cover the cost of this mission. Well, uh, we wouldn't consider the the station itself a loss since we're going to be making use of it. So as long as we consider the station cost itself a uh, a positive for us, or at least not a negative, then I guess maybe the contract will suffice. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're getting some pretty close passes of our prior 
our fairings. Shouldn't those go away at some point? Man. Oh, here's another one coming up. Oh darn, I forgot something. I forgot to put on a carbonite detector. I don't have a carbonite... I have a carbonite satellite around the moon, but I don't have one around Minmus. So I need to send over a satellite to detect for carbonite before we send the lander down. Not a huge problem, but uh, definitely something I have to remember for next time. So next time, uh, definitely sending over a carbonite detector and also testing out the lander to make sure it can mine the carbonite properly, bring it back to the station and get it converted. We'll also need to add a fuel module to this because right now this is the only actual fuel tank for it. So we got some plans for Minmus. And there's also the question about whether we want to attach the asteroid to this or just uh, have it in its own little orbit around, the, around Minmus. I'll have to think about that. Suggestions welcome. Okay, that's going up again. Alright. We'll leave it there. Let's say we plot a uh, maneuver. I don't want to do too much correction at Minmus itself. We're going to take some time to get out to Minmus. Probably Space Tug Beta is going to be first. Let's see. What's our maneuver? Yeah. Okay, so Space Tug Beta with the asteroid is going to get there first. So let's just add an alarm here. And let's go back to our asteroid. All right, so here we are in Minmosphere of Influence. I suppose we'll want to get this into a relatively uh, equatorial orbit. So let me try that out for size. Looks a little bit inclined, but we'll leave it at that and correct it later. Uh, we'll leave the tug with it. There's no particular other job for the tug right now. All right, let's do this. Certainly the tug's main job will be grabbing asteroids for us. We should check whether some of them are aimed at Kerbin. We certainly don't want any asteroids to harm our populace. We can do this right now, I think. This is definitely the asteroid that Minmus deserves as a moon. Really tiny, easily maneuverable. Oh, well, we have to do the mid-course plane change for the other mission first. Okay, uh, let us add this one just so I don't forget. And let's go to that. Well, this is really exciting, isn't it? I mean, we're really developing Minmus very quickly now. Giving it its moon and giving it a station with carbonite mining capabilities, carbonite mining probe and everything. That looks a bit more flat. I think that'll be a good approach to put this into a nice equatorial orbit around Minmus. Doesn't need to be equatorial. Maybe we should have it at some inclination in order to reach certain parts of Minmus. Um, yeah, because if our lander has to go somewhere with a, with a high latitude, not very high, let's say 20 degrees, it'll be hard to rendezvous with this. But then again, Inclination changes around Minmus are really easy anyway, and we've got enough fuel in the lander, so it's sort of a a good question whether we need it in inclination or not. Anyway, this is uh, very much very much on its way, so I'm going to leave it here, and let's continue on with our asteroid. Okay, 195 by 146, 7.8 degree inc inclination, so I think I'll leave it there. We need a name for it. Maybe it should be like Kamos or Kobos uh, in reference to Phobos or Deimos because they're tiny little potato roids and uh, just throwing a K in front of them. But that's that's a question I'll I'll take suggestions for. I don't know if we can officially, we can, it says we can rename Asteroid. I don't know if it'll keep, I forget uh, how that works out. Alright, um, yeah, but anyway, Minmus has a moon. Let us give it a station as well. Ah, it's a good point. We are, we are approaching on a, on a retrograde inclination. 
Should we change that or should we leave it? Hmm. It's not a bad retrograde inclination right now. But I think we should change it just for efficiency's sake. I don't want to have our miners constantly having to go retrograde to meet, meet up with us. Okay, well, we've corrected inclination. Got a negative periapsis, though. I want to leave it at 20, I think. That'll cover a good bit of ground. Let's say 50 kilometers, uh, maybe 60. 60 is good. All right, that's good. So let's try and get into an orbit like that. I'm going to leave it at 66 by 54. 18.34 degrees. Let's see, neutralize controls. I guess I'll take SAS off just to make sure it's very, very neutral. Maybe SAS on would be helpful. Not too sure what's going to get to recognize that controls are neutralized. Let's get SAS on. It doesn't seem to be helping to have it off. Just waiting for it to recognize that I've neutralize controls. Maybe a brief time warp would do the trick. Okay, well I can't just wait about. Um, let's deploy the station. Uh, stage out the... Oh no, it gave me the contract finally. Alright, good, good. So, uh, how much do we get for that, by the way? Uh, 206,000. Not too shabby. We got 250 science. That's probably more important. Okay. So, yes, let's deploy the station properly now. So, uh, we're going to separate out the second stage, which will eventually return next episode, probably. Okay, so second stage, it has its own solar panel re and everything. It should be okay. And actually, let's, before I forget, activate this tank, which gives you an idea how much. It's probably got more than 2,000. Yeah. It has 30 tons there. Okay, but now let's deploy the station. So, uh, first, that action group didn't work, darn it. Let's deploy the circular, the curved solar arrays. Okay, so we've got a nice circuit there. Next, I want to get these extended and then deployed. Ah, there's always one that doesn't go with... Oh! Oh! Oh, that's not fair. Those were action group to one as well. Hold on. Ah, so much for my great plan to deploy these in dramatic fashion. That'll have to... No, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm sure we'll have electric charge. Let's deploy the habitation ring, though. So really, the only uh, position where the solar panel is going to have trouble getting electric charge is if the sun was up here somewhere, because the habitation ring would be in the way. Yeah, that's a pretty nifty station, I hope you think. We've got the... this is the... you're gonna have to separate it out, the carbonite mining lander. But I'll do that, it'll have to be redocked, so I'll do that in the next episode. As we uh, deploy the carbonite detection satellite in orbit around Minmus. Okay, so I think this is operational. Oh, let's turn on the lights. We do have very mild lights just for the nighttime side so that we can see it properly. So they they barely show up on the daytime side. Yep. Very soft. All right. So, yes, I think we can call this episode a success. We will continue on with many other things. We shouldn't neglect our other stuff. I, I want to put 
mo new modules on our other stations, including the Duna station, which needs supplies, mostly supply modules, uh, so that we can extend the duration in which they are self-sufficient instead of resupplying them, the stations in particular. All right, anyway, but uh, that's thoughts for another day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.